CEO of Zipline, also on a committee for the Department of Transportation. This is a new committee. Is it going to be around for long if it's just been announced by Secretary Fox? Yeah, good question. Uh, I mean, we, we think that the new administration will be just as interested in driving innovation in the U.S. as the previous one. So I'm pretty excited about the future for drones in the U.S. And when it comes to drones in the U.S., you've already been deploying in Rwanda. What are the lessons that you've learned? I mean, some phenomenal things that your company does, delivering blood and the like, and just in time for, for doctors in remote places. What are the learnings that you have to deploy in the U.S.? Well, I, you know, in, interestingly, over the last three months, as we've been uh, as we've been running this system at national scale in Rwanda, we've really realized that building the technology in some ways is the easy part. You know, the, the hard part is designing something that can integrate with a complicated healthcare network, uh, making sure that doctors and nurses know how to receive products via uh, autonomous uh, uh, drones, and then also making sure that people on the ground who are seeing these planes flying overhead know that these planes are making life-saving deliveries. I mean, Rwanda was very keen, as you see on these pictures, amazing pictures, to accept this sort of help. The regulatory issues weren't there. How much of there is a hurdle here in the United States and in other countries when it comes to adapting the regulation to ensure this sort of thing can happen? Well, interestingly, Rwanda has a pretty similar uh, regulatory regime to the U.S. They borrow a lot from the U.S. in terms of rules for uh, both airplanes and drones. Uh, the difference really is that, A, the need is so incredibly high when you can make a delivery that is directly saving someone's life. Uh, and B, Rwanda has a, a relatively simpler airspace. And so it was a perfect place to show how when a country adopts modern regulatory practices, uh, you can generate a lot of value for people uh, who really need the help. And interestingly, a lot of the same, a lot of the problems that we're currently solving in Rwanda, you see those same problems here in the U.S. People who live in rural or hard to reach places often can't get access to the basic medical care they need. So our hope is that the, the role model that Rwanda is playing right now will influence the U.S. in terms of providing similar uh, levels of, of healthcare access here in this country. So FAA approval close? I hope so. We are, uh, we're going through the process with the FAA, talking to them about what it's going to take to basically uh, to, to just get to a point where these kinds of systems can be operated in a way that saves people's lives and in a way that's safe for people on the ground and in the sky. Other countries coming clamoring to your door? <laughs> you know, we've been really excited. I think it's amazing that a small country like Rwanda uh, is basically leading the world. It, they, they don't have very many resources, but they're basically leading the world in terms of showing how this technology can save lives. And as a result of them showing what's possible, uh, many, many other countries have come to us, have come to them saying, how can we implement similar systems? So this is really just the start. We're really looking forward to expanding this uh, across the globe, both in places with really challenging infrastructure, uh, as well as places in the U.S. that you might think of as having good infrastructure, but they're still uh, millions of people who don't have access to, to, uh, to health care when they need it. And would it always remain medical supplies that you deliver? Is this something that you can span out into other sectors? You know, <laughs> without mentioning names, there are um, several big companies that are trying to deliver like Slurpees or pizza or burritos using drones. As a company, we're really driven by the mission of uh, delivering medicine to people across the world, especially in the hardest to reach places. So that's a very large problem. 5.8 million kids die every year due to lack of access to basic medical products. We'd be very happy and honored to spend the next several decades of our lives just solving that specific problem.